This is a video about how to pot up your Nepenthes tropical pitcher plants um, once you receive them from us here at Predatory Plants. Everything I'm going to talk about is covered in this planting guide that we include at every order. But I know some people like uh, to have a video to sort of see things visually, and uh, that's what this is for. Before you start, you're going to want to get some water, either low mineral tap water if you've tested your water and you know that it has a low mineral content, uh, like ours does, or distilled water, reverse osmosis water, or collected rainwater. So you'll get a box, it'll open it up, and it'll look like this. Um, our packing material is also the planting material. It's dried long fiber sphagnum. It makes good packing material, and it's very high quality moss. So you're going to put that in your uh, bucket or Tupperware or whatever. In our instructions, we say to wait 15 to 20 minutes for it to hydrate, which you can do if you want. Um, if you don't want to wait that long, you can um, kind of massage the moss. It's basically a sponge. So uh, you know, treat it like a sponge, you squeeze it and then release and it'll absorb the water that way. <clears throat> so then you're going to want to take your plants out. They're in a uh, Ziploc bag. These plants actually were packed up about a week ago in a box. We were going to ship them, but then the weather was too cold. Um, so now I'm taking them out to put them back in the greenhouse. So they come with a plant stake right here. And then the plant um, has paper towel around the root ball. Uh, and you can see um, leaves all set up. So you're going to take that paper towel off. And uh, leave this root ball alone. Um, you don't need to mess with this moss and bare root it all the way. It's totally fine as is the same moss that we ship it with and um, can grow in that just fine. This is Nepenthes hookeriana. Same deal. Got a plant tag. You've got um, the shop towel around the moss ball. All the same stuff, so. There it is right there. We also include pots with every order. We have two pots. And so, you know, as many pots as you order plants. And so you're ready to go. Um, you may notice I'm wearing gloves. That's because it's kind of cold in the greenhouse today. Um, and also, my hands are kind of sensitive to water. You don't have to. Sometimes people who work with a lot of sphagnum wear gloves to avoid a thing called uh, spurotrichosis, which is um, a condition that comes from certain fungal spores. If they, like, if you have uh, broken skin, the spores get in your hands. It it can uh, it can get it can be bad, but it's not common for you know the average person who's not handling sphagnum all day long. So you can do this barehanded if you want. Um, so. Take the plant and the moss, which is, you know, pretty hydrated by this point, and make a bit of a root ball around it. So wrap the, the roots with the sphagnum, or wrap the root ball with more sphagnum. I like to put a little bit of moss at the bottom of the pot as well. Let's fill it in and then try fitting it in the pot. You want it to be firm, like snug, but not super tight. So this is okay, it's a little bit loose. I'm gonna fill in with some more moss around the edges. Um, you wanna plant to about the same depth as the paper towel was wrapped. So that's, uh, that's on the planting guys. So fill in the moss on the edges right here for this guy. Then take your plant stake and you're ready to go. And grow that wherever you put your plants. We'll do that again with this Hirsuta by Spathulata. Again, start wrapping around the root ball. 
throw a little bit in the bottom of the pot to fill it in. Uh, this is pretty messy, so you either want to do this outside or at least somewhere with tile floors and laminate counters or something like that. Or your kitchen sink is a good place to do potting if you're in an apartment. So you wrap it around and again fit it down into the pot. Just squeeze in there and then uh, kind of you can massage it like this to get the moss distributed. You know, squeeze either side of the pot. This is kind of low, so I'm going to put some more moss on the corners. Just kind of finish filling that in, and oh, watch out for the tendrils. And you're good. Just take the the plant stake and stick it in there, and there you are. So that's how you pot them up. Um, we use mostly pure long fiber sphagnum for our nepenthes in the greenhouse. That works with our style um, of you know greenhouse growing and watering and all that. Some people have other mixes that they're used to involving perlite or pumice and orchid bark or whatever. Those are totally fine if that's what you like to use. Don't worry about it. But the the long fiber should be fine, especially if you've uh, never bought Nepenthes before, never grown them. It, it should last a couple years before it breaks down and needs to be repotted. And by that time, the plant should be bigger anyway. Um, some people might worry about getting a plant in the mail. Uh, as I said, these were in a bag, in a box for a week. And pretty much nothing bad happened to them at all, even though they were in the dark in a bag and all that. Uh, an even more example, extreme example is this plant. We shipped this plant in, I think, October. It got lost in the post and returned to us. It took a month, and uh, we got it back three weeks ago or so. This is the picture that we shipped it with. So it spent a month, four weeks, in a bag, in the dark, getting tossed around through the post office. We got it back to the greenhouse, potted it up, and it held its picture that it was shipped with for another three weeks. So Nepenthes are pretty tough, as long as they don't freeze in transit um, or, or get baked in the sun or something, and, and that's avoidable, uh, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty good. So this is the uh, way to pot them up once you receive it, and hope that was useful.